episode 22 with me, um, Michael Newman and Tom Hill. How's that? How's it doing? How are you doing? Um, I am doing very well. Thank you very much, Michael. The, um, even though, even though the weather is not, I'm in Yorkshire, so the weather is, is, is generally not fantastic. This morning, it felt very springy and sunshiny. And, and my son and I saw, we saw two baby deer by the side of the road. We stopped, yeah. even stopped the car and we looked at them. They didn't go away. And then we saw lots of rabbits as well. So. Nice. How do you know you're British when you, you're 30 seconds into a podcast, you talk about the weather? That's how you know you're British. And, and also, I am very, very good at queuing. <laughs> yes, obviously. Um, right, guys. So, yeah, episode 22, we are going to talk about the exact five things to focus on, which you can do literally today or Monday, because everyone starts Monday, um, that will help you to start losing weight. But not just losing weight, like long term and sustainable, because you know, any, anyone can lose weight. That, that's normally not the battle. The, the the hard part's losing the weight and actually keeping it off long term. So we're going to give you some exact steps to follow and also a little bit around mindset and some of the, we're going to do some depth on the on the five things. So I think they're going to get a huge amount of value today from this, Tom. Definitely. And and also, yeah, if, if you if you like it, if you think what we're saying makes sense, if you give a little like on the, on the post, it means it sends it out to the algorithm and other people can see it because if, if you see value, other people see value, and then we can we can all help each other and spread the love a little bit, can't we? Yes. Plus, on the inside, it gives us a little like, yes. I know, I know. People like it. All right. Um. So, just quickly before we do get into this, I want to make it very aware that there's a mindset of going into a weight loss program that I think is really important. So, obviously, we're talking about the five things to focus on to lose weight. But the mindset going into anything, especially like weight loss or, you know, whatever it is, like weight loss especially, the mindset should be getting healthy, yeah. right? It should always be getting healthy. We see all these things about, you know, lose a certain amount of weight and do all these things. But the mindset going in absolutely has to be about getting healthy. And then as a byproduct of that, most signs, if you know if you're overweight and you lose weight, you're going to get into a healthier place. But the mindset going into it really needs to be about getting healthy and not just about losing weight. Would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, definitely, hundred percent. And it, and the, it's like you said, it's it's the the weight is a natural byproduct of better health. Yes, and and it will just, you say, the five things we are talking about today are, are, are not earth shattering and are not. Uh, it's not like weird kind of pseudoscience. These these are just the these are consistent things that if you did kind of week in week out yeah you would definitely 100 percent. no no i have no doubts about it you definitely be healthier and also you definitely lose weight 100 percent. yeah so just to, like i say just to reiterate that like you know of course the weight loss is great but like tom said it should be a byproduct of the like habits and behaviors and um everything you do in your life if you, if you do the right things the right process the weight loss would be a byproduct and everything else that comes with that, like extra energy, better mood, you know, all those things. So um, let's kick off with the first one, shall we? Yeah, number one. Number um, one. Yeah, number one. So basically, you know, there's no particular order in these. Some may be more important than others, but there's no particular order. We think five of them are really important, but let's kick off. We've got to start somewhere, right? Um, so the first one is a calorie deficit. Yeah. Like, it's, um, it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's science. Is it the law of thermodynamics? It's, it's basically, it's science fact. Um, there is a little bit of kind of people pushing slightly gray areas. Like we were speaking yeah. about, like we, you, you shared a great podcast from a guy and he was talking about gut health and he was talking about don't focus on, on like calories. And, and I kind of get, if you get over focused on calories, that doesn't work either. But all the stuff he was talking about basically create a deficit. Yeah. Once you actually looked at it from a, from a critical thing, you create a deficit. And that is the, is the only way we're kind of, again, we create a deficit because we want to lose weight. I suppose we just talked about it's not just about losing weight, but that is how we do it. Yeah, exactly. You know, you basically have to, we, we, we all have a certain amount of, of calories that we will burn at a steady state, basically, just through our day, just normal. If I'm sitting here or Tom's sitting there or you're, you're at home doing whatever you're doing, if you do nothing and you don't, you know, don't necessarily move, 
you'll have a certain amount of calories that you'll just you'll you'll just burn naturally throughout what's that, that day. What's that called? Come on, let's let's wow it. Wow, we with a long word, long kind of word. Well, I have to go back and get my um books. What's um what's it? Meta ba basal, basal metabolic basal. rate. So that's your basal metabolic rate. By the way, none of you need to know <laughs> the, the, the technical terms for that, but it's basically the amount of calories you just naturally burn through the day. And to make this just super easy. If you're a man that's normally 2,500 and, you know, it can be up and down depending on your weight and activity level, rough, roughly. It's just roughly, you know, because we can't do this for everyone. And if you're a lady, that would be about 2,000. But again, that can change with, you know, weight, height and activity levels. But generally speaking, it's, it's that. And then if you want to lose weight, you have to burn. You have to be you consuming, as in taking in that energy, which is less than, than that amount, essentially. Yeah, and I, I know I, I know there's different people do it in different ways. Um, there's yeah. a, another coach we know called Chris, and he doesn't do any calorie counting at all. And, and the way that he does it with his clients, he just takes pictures. So so yeah. he, he, he they, they create he creates the accountability, the good habits around picture taking. And everything has to be taken pictures. And there is there is something quite amazing if you actually take pictures of all your food. There's it's like oh, and and it, there's quite often it's like I didn't um, I didn't want to take them because I knew what I was taking a picture of. And that even that awareness, that, isn't it? Yeah, it's the awareness that having yeah. just of if 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 like if you took if you just went away and took pictures of all your food, you would definitely make different choices. And that that's just you going hmm, and taking a bit of ownership of that. So there's not one way of doing it, is there? Yeah, I reckon even if you um, took photos of your shopping basket and like shared that, you, you'd probably make some changes because it's like it's that sort of sharing certain foods that maybe you what aren't going to be the best for you that you you know you may have but essentially any diet you do keto mediterranean low carb high fat cut out the sugar gluten free they only work if you're in a calorie deficit and no matter which way you package them up they're all lead back to calorie deficit right yeah yeah they all do and that again that's not just as from experience this is this is scientifically um I can't say proof because obviously science is not about proving things for definite, but all the evidence points yeah. towards this is this is this is the only way. So, yeah, obviously you have to be in a calorie deficit. But what we want to do is actually give you some help on, I don't know, some strategies and some things to to think about. I always think if you're going to do something. So if we're talking about calorie deficit, we're mainly talking about diet, aren't we? And that just means the food you eat and what you choose to follow. So I always think to myself, I'm going to do something. Could I see myself doing this in a year's time, two years time, five years time? Yeah. If it's yes, chance that's probably going to be sustainable. Would you agree with that, Tom? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And that's again, it's quite often. Um, I think was it last week or before talking about some the gym I used to work out. We used to do like a twenty-one day diet plan. It was really <laughs> fucking hard. And, and then we're like, oh, thank God that's over at the end. And obviously, most people went back to exactly where they were. The odd person would would probably would be all right, but um most people went back and yeah and it's it's got to be you can't feel like you are like going on a diet even the phrase is like i'm going to go on to something which i'm not going to sustain I'm going yeah to like to i'm going to go on holiday you yeah exactly I'm going to go on holiday, right? and, yeah and when when i'm when i'm sick of it or when i've lost a couple of pounds i'm going to go back to my normal food whereas i suppose what we're saying is your normal food we should be aiming to be better if we want to be healthier and we think maybe there are some things you need to change, then we should be aiming to be better. hundred percent, especially if we're thinking about health long term as well, because I think that's I think that's one of the biggest problems I, I, I see. And I'm sure you've seen it as well. It's like short term thinking. So I've got this amount of weight to lose 15, 20, 30 pounds, whatever it is for, I don't know, for a holiday or a birthday or something. It's like, well, I need to lose this as quick as I can. Mm. And then I've heard so many people go and then I'll eat healthy or you know, it's, well, why don't you start eating healthy now and not cut out all these things because you want to get the weight off as quick as possible? It's such a short term thinking, isn't it? So maybe that just plays into the way we want things quicker and we want results quicker. Um, but it, and I suppose the long term is it? Um, our bodies are is it every seven years? Basically, we're totally new. Every cell in our body is replaced every seven years or eleven years. Something like that, yeah. Something like that. So, I mean, literally, the, the, the food you consume is is creates creates your body. So, it's if if you're putting the food you're putting into it, um, in I don't, 
because I'm not a scientist, but your body is going to be created by that food. And in seven years time, your body's going to be totally brand new or however many years. So in that seven years, if you've eaten shit for seven years, your body's probably not going to be as, as able and as being as healthy as it could be. Yeah, agreed. Um, and, you know, we have those cliches of you are what you eat, but essentially you are, you know, you're putting something in, and we don't want to get too preachy because, you know, but, you know, if you put good foods in, you, you get good outputs in terms of energy and how you feel. If you put foods that aren't necessarily great for you and this, those types of foods are like ultra processed foods, there's so much research coming out about those now, then it's it's, it's not going to be good. You're not going to have good energy. You're going to feel lethargic and tired all the time. So those foods just aren't good for you. Yeah, change um, your brain change your brain waves and they do yeah but listen we ain't got time to go into that um <laughs> uh, we, we always run out of time these or we overrun we want to try it to keep it to about 20 minutes but it's all good um second one yep. is um again these are in no particular order but it's so important to do some form of weight training or resistance training whether that's in the gym some weights at home or you know some of your own body weight or using them you know the machines in the gym yep. um massively beneficial especially as we get older right tom in terms of retaining our strength retaining our muscle muscle mass yeah i mean muscle uh, muscle mass is one of the big, biggest indicators of early death if you're lacking muscle mass you die earlier and again this is this is all proven in, in big studies and and so and all, I, you're more capable you, things like um falling over again i think i read yeah. too much but again another indicator of, of early death is whether you can stand up and down easily and if you yeah, think about- it's, it's it's older adults biggest fear because yeah. they, they know if they fall over and end up in hospital there's a good chance that they might not get out yeah exactly and it like something like you think about a press up um, a press up is effectively the first if you if you fell down on the ground face first a press up is kind of is how you'd maybe get up out of that position and so- protecting yourself if you did fall over absolutely absolutely and again it doesn't need to be complicated it doesn't need to be like I say if, if you don't like going to the gym or you, you don't know what to do like press ups and we all know how to do press ups and squats if you don't know how to do a perfect squat find find a two-year-old and, and 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 watch them and they'll show you exactly how to do it we're not saying go and just find a two-year-old though because <laughs> let's, no, no, really. let's not get those wires crossed yeah, that would be weird that would be weird but, of a friend or family yeah but yeah, I'm going to say if you just if you just said right, you know, I'm going to do press ups and squats for every day. I'm going to do a few of them. It doesn't really matter how many for every day for the next, I don't know, for the rest of my life. That will probably probably do most people fine. Probably two of the things you don't need any equipment that you can do anywhere, anytime, more or less, and you're going to get real good benefits literally just from those two things. Um, yeah, absolutely, and. Like we say, so important in keeping your metabolism like a little bit higher for men, especially with promoting testosterone. And yeah. if you have more muscle, you naturally burn more calories. You know, there's, there's there's literally so many benefits. And I think, again, that's something that people struggle with long term is they think, right, I've got to lose this weight. So I do loads of cardio. Yeah. If I live, uh, uh, the lady I was talking to today, she, she mentioned it. She said, oh, I think I might go to the gym and do some treadmills. I said, oh, what's your, what's your main goal? She said, oh, well, I want to trim up a bit. I want to build a bit more muscle. It's like, okay, well, that's... Not yeah, muscle, wait, that ain't going to happen then. It's not going to happen there. So I suppose there's a little bit of kind of what, what's, what do I want to do? What do I want to get out of this? Um, and making sure that it's aligned with that. Um, and another thing about that maybe like the benefit of, of muscle and strength is it, it sets you, it, it means that life is easier. I'm, yep. I am probably every day when I do some like blow me on trumpet, but just when I'm when I do something that's I think do you know what I'm physically able to do that. And it, what would well, I you do? You got to bring all the shopping in in one go, right? Yes, yes, exactly. You can bring all the bags and you can carry it, and that's a nice weighted carry. And, and something like um, an example I used to use a lot in the gym was was being able to to hang for a little bit because yeah. there might be a time in your life you have to you're gonna have to I don't know burning building and you have to hang off a windowsill you don't want to be there going shit you know i really wish i'd hung should have done a few more pull-ups yeah but and, and that's that and again that's that's not a that's not a strength skill that you need any equipment for i mean I don't know, hang off a tree or i don't know but it strength kind of sets you free and that strength comes yeah from but also like you know leading by example like you know going over the kids over the part of the kids and showing the kids that you can do the monkey bars and, and things like that that's 
you know, your kids absorb what they see. So if, you know, if your parent is able to do that, they're like, God, my dad's so strong. My mum's so strong. Look, look what they can do. And and the other thing I'd say to, to like recognise is like everyone likes being strong. It's not a male thing either. Like everyone likes feeling a bit stronger. I've, I've coached hundreds of female clients, especially when I did personal training. Everyone liked doing more press ups. Everyone liked mm-hmm. being able to squat heavier weights. Like everyone, everyone likes the feeling of feeling stronger because you, you just feel that bit like you feel that bit more sturdy, don't you? Your core muscles are strong. You know, it's it's a, it's a nice feeling. Yeah, it's a it's like there's a there's a water park near me and just down the road, and we go there with the kids and 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 part of the reason I like it is because I can do all the stuff. And yeah. again, it, it it feels a little. I'm probably showing off a little bit, but um, yeah, show off. I know, but but I like the fact that I'm that I can do it, and yeah. I definitely see see kind of parents there and and dads who who, who can't. And I I've, I've never heard anybody say, you know, I really wish I wasn't this strong. I wish I wish I was less yeah. strong and less and. And no one, no one's ever done that. And like you said, I, I've def like it's not, it's not just for men, is it? I've definitely trained women that no. go. Do you know what? I'm, I, I'm really proud of the fact that actually I am strong. And yeah, we look, we we all look up and respect people that are strong too, because you know to be an Olympian, no matter what discipline you're in, you you know requires strength. We all love watching the world's strongest man in the world. We all love people that have these amazing races where they do the endurance. It all takes strength, physical and mental, and we all respect and look up to that so why wouldn't we want it for ourselves we we do but it's just maybe having that shift in mindset to go actually do you know what if i went to the gym and focused on getting stronger each time i would definitely get close to my goal then thinking short term and trying to burn all the calories yeah all right but we should move on so because we got we got five to cover and the next one that we both agreed on was that we thought daily movements so this is outside of the gym outside of the strength training resistance whatever that looks like for you Daily movement is 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 massive, right? Yeah, and we, we live in quite a, a more and more sedentary environment, and I think a lot of in uh, innovations in our world are there to make things easier, which I understand. Yeah. Even even things I was thinking about, even things like um, like uh, automatic doors and, and 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 kind of escalators and, and all these things that to make our lives easier mobility to... scooters you see a lot more of now and i think i actually reckon about 50 percent of the people that use those actually don't need them oh, right right i don't know I'll, I'll well the amount of times i've seen someone in a mobility scooter and then they stop and just get out and do whatever they need to do i'm like you know and what that's doing is you're actually just getting older quicker because the little bit of walking maybe you did do that you, you don't do anymore yeah and I think yeah. um, I, I know some some older people. I know again, we probably most people watching this probably aren't, aren't in that age group. But I know a lot of old people in COVID. They did less, and 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 they haven't managed to get back to that level. Um, and it's it is a bit of a use use it or lose it when it comes to kind of movement and most office most work now. I guess is office based. Yeah, in front of a computer, you eat your sandwiches at your desk, get in your car, drive home. Taylor to the kids have tea, sat down, sit down, watch Netflix. So there's there's not a generally, I mean, there's not a lot of movement going on. Not compared to if you look at like thirty years ago, yeah, even, yeah, even maybe twenty years ago. Yeah, so that's why it's so important because obviously we just don't do it naturally. So you know, if we imagine we sleep seven to eight hours, and then we've got another eight or nine hours at work, we've got then you know about another eight hours again, and that's a long period of time to. to to, to do stuff or find time of course people got activities and stuff but it's you know you got to try and find some time to get that movement in because if you're not that was a place where you know if, if you had a job where you was busy you know if you naturally just burnt ten thousand calories and then suddenly you're at an office desk you're not you just suddenly lost all that all that movement and that's gonna have a knock-on effect going forward suddenly you're gonna potentially gain weight and not necessarily realize why and the other thing to, to, to that as well is like as much as the movement's great it's also great for your mental health getting out the house getting some fresh air it's going to help you sleep it's going to reduce stress lift your mood there's definitely a feedback loop there isn't there and i think that's why some of these um some of these apps are quite good like they you know the uh i i watch it's got yep. little circles and quite often people talk about I've just complete i've, I've filled in my circles yeah, because um, it feels good, doesn't it? Yeah, and like the the ten k steps, whether you whether you whether ten k 
doesn't really matter. The number doesn't really matter, but it's just having a like a little target, and thinking right. If I, if yeah. I do this, um, I'm I'm being be I'm moving enough. And I, I use the, I use the 10k steps because it's just an indicator of overall uh, is the are you sedentary or not? And yeah, I, hitting, I do too. Yeah, if you're only hitting a couple of thousand steps, which actually is quite common when the people I speak to, how many steps you know I'm in two thousand? That's not very many. Um, about not and remember not. Your, your phone's going to pick or your watch is going to pick up on things that aren't steps as well yeah so how many if you're only clocking two thousand steps you might have only done thousand maybe so it's you're not doing a lot of movement and our human bodies are terrible when it comes to sat down and do nothing they don't don't deal with it very well like that's why we have to peel ourselves out of a car don't we we drive yeah. for five hours and we go oh, and get out like that that's because our bodies don't like to be sat still yeah we're, we're designed to move aren't we yeah, um, children do it. Kids do. Watch, watch a group of kids. They're like, they're all kind of moving about, aren't they? They're used yeah. to it. They haven't learned like we are. And they're, and they're so flexible, kids as well. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, if you're not getting daily movement in, it means you're going to have to be very good on your diet side of things because you're not really burning any calories to get some calories back. And then you, if you're going to the gym, you're really relying on those gym sessions three, four, five times a week, whatever that looks like. But if you imagine you're not doing them. Your diet's not very good and you're not moving you, you're gonna be you're gonna yeah. be in a, a bad place in terms of health because yeah. those things are all indicators of good health regular exercise eating healthy moving your body and i would even um, say thinking about it i know we said there's no kind of criteria i would say if if you're if you're not if you're very sedentary right now i would say probably the gym's probably not the place not the first place to go in terms of movement or it, it's probably right how yeah. can i get my my standard movement up first before doing that because i think if you're if you're sat down a lot you're not gonna out gym that sitting down Is that no and also you know if you're gonna go into the gym and do some form of resistance training if you haven't moved your body a lot you're probably gonna ache for a good week yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. realistically you're probably gonna ache for a good week because if you're not even used to moving your body then you suddenly do some resistance training in the gym you, you know you're gonna ache and go oh, i ain't doing that again <laughs> definitely um, the daily move, getting the daily movement in that can have really transformative fantastic effects on on your on your whole health and life yeah i agree like i think getting your steps in walking getting some fresh air listening to a podcast or just being aware of your surroundings especially in nice environments so underrated yeah I, I don't know anyone that goes for a walk and comes back. You know, you're talking earlier about, um, you know, there's no one that doesn't like being a bit stronger. I don't know anyone that goes for a walk unless they've had a serious injury and goes, I feel worse. Mm. Everyone feels better after walking. Yeah. All right, uh, two to go. So, again, this is absolutely fundamental and so much more research has come out about it recently and we've um, spoke about it on here before is sleep. Sleep yeah. is massive massive it's when your body your body processes the day and recovers from the day and if if you wake up not feeling refreshed uh, you you're not going to feel you're not going to feel like doing the other stuff that you need to do you're not going to have the headspace for that yeah your body, your body metabolizes your food in different ways it, yeah without without that sleep low mood yeah, low mood, um, testosterone, yeah. um, intimate relationships. Higher, yeah, higher hunger levels. Like there's levels. there's so many things if you're not getting good quality sleep. Yeah, um, and like I say, we, we could, you could spend hours and hours and hours talking about how to get better sleep, and we don't need to go into that here because there are resources out there to do it. And we've spoken about it as well. So you can we watch have. Video about it's, on, it. it's on YouTube. Look through or look through our Facebook and um, LinkedIn. It's it's there. It's all there yeah. for you. And, and and how much you need. Again, sometimes it's like you need to have this amount of sleep. Um, I think it depends on it depends on you. It depends on, on, your, on who you are. Yeah. And also the time of year. At the moment, I'm, I need more sleep. And I'm not sure why I, I could research it maybe and find out why but it doesn't really matter to me it's just my I, i'm i need more sleep and i'm feeling more tired and then i'll go for a bit of time where i won't so it's like it's what you need is how you i think the most important thing is how you feel when you wake up if you feel refreshed then you are yeah and you you may have a period of time where you do need more but again it's about not just the length of sleep but it's the quality of sleep isn't it so you know you shouldn't when you've had a sleep you shouldn't be waking up feeling tired 
if you are that's a pretty good indicator that you haven't had good restful sleep and then that's then the knock-on effect is another good indicator that it's going to be a lot harder to lose weight or, ma or manage your weight there's, there's lots of again research that you guys can can search on, on that there's like direct correlations and also f with people that maybe struggle with sleep apnea and you know there's a again a direct correlation with if you're overweight you're going to have these problems and, and vice versa you're going to be you're going to struggle to sleep because you're overweight and you're going to struggle and you're going to be overweight because you struggle to sleep you know it's a, there's a like correlation with both yeah no definitely and like you mentioned about kind of cortisol levels if you if you are if you haven't slept very well this your stress hormones are high yeah. in your body and and getting metabolizing food and you tend to hold on to more food and hold on to more weight so it is if again if you think about i don't know i, I need to lose weight and uh, i need to do this first have a little think about sleep again i think it's often the missed one so overlooked the missed part of it um and but yeah but we spend a third of our life doing it i know <laughs> yeah it's so overlooked but yeah a third of our life we will be asleep and some some of us will be sleeping restfully, some of us won't be. And again, you know, we've talked about this before. Like, we've both spoken to, to people that haven't, they go, oh, I haven't slept for years, like, properly. And it's like, it might be something to figure out and not just accept. Yeah. And I, again, I don't think anybody's ever woke, ever would not want to, to wake up refreshed. I'm not saying that I jump out of bed like a gazelle every morning. No? Uh, no. <laughs> um, and one thing I do hate about, about, about modern sleep around sleep is is the snooze button hate it yeah it's like it's like almost like the worst invention ever um if it should just yeah i don't like it at all and occasionally i find myself s s sneaking back into this the snooze and i don't i don't need no, i don't need it um so yeah avoid avoid the snooze button set your time get up and yeah. if, you don't, if you don't, if you haven't, if you don't, if you still, if you still feel tired when you wake up, you're not going to feel any better in in nine minutes time or seven minutes time. No, you feel worse because they reckon you go into another sleep cycle, which you, you know it's not good. Just um, even as hard as it is, just get out of bed and then fix the problem after. All right. So um, last one. So obviously we wanted to give you five uh, things to focus on, and we we've got to the last one. So the last one is um, hydration. Yeah. And like. Again, I think this is one of those things that just it just gets so overlooked. Again, you know, I've again, I'm, I'm sure you're the same, Tom. Like, I've spoken to people that have said I've tried everything, literally everything. They're listing off all these diets. I've tried all these things, and I say, you know, how much water do you drink? Oh, I don't drink water. Yeah. It's like, literally, like blows my mind. Someone struggled for maybe twenty years, tried every diet under the sun, yet they're still just not hydrated and it, it might be an excuse like oh i don't like water and it's like come on grow up <laughs> like seriously like grow up put some juice in it you know if it's if it's that much of a struggle exactly and, and again it can be transformative i've had clients who've like every week it's like kind of give me give, what how's your week gone and he's like do you know what water and I, I know i've been told it for years <laughs> and i know i should have done it but do you know what the fact that you've held me accountable and I'm doing it, it's just transformed my life. Literally, that's that. I mean, that's not my word. That's somebody saying that. Magic water. I've had it as well. I've yeah. had this client, Rio, if she's watching, like, hey, Rio, like a few years back, she come on the call. Like, it's after the first one or two weeks early. And she was like, water. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's magic. And I was like, OK. Yeah. And again, how much you need? Who knows? Just. But the, the thing is, you need to find out your level, don't you? You need to. You need to kind of start getting into a habit of doing it and think and I, again assess it what am i drinking and you might I, again quite often happens is you might start peeing a lot at first yeah because your body's going what are you doing to me but if you're if you if you if you add in i don't know a liter of water into a day you're not drinking anything and you pee a lot i'm gonna say your body should be your body should be fine you should be able to take in i don't know two two liters three liters or whatever and be totally fine so yeah you might pee a lot at first but once you get over that you'll be fine yeah, and let's be honest, you know, you, you, you're going to be taking, if you're not taking toilet breaks, you're probably going to be taking breaks for other stuff elsewhere, you know, if, you, if you're if you tired and, you know, you're probably going to be drinking a lot of coffee and all these things, so you, you're going to be having breaks, so you might as well have a break because you actually need to pee because your body's hydrated and working a lot better than it was without having water. Yeah. Um, and it's genuinely, like, again, like one of the most underused things that we we've all got access to so easy mm. 
Mm. And we no, all, is, and, and again, like Mark was saying, we, he, he knew it and been told it for years. Yeah. Uh, but it's a, it's just a, I suppose it's, it's about being consistent and going, and like we said right at the beginning, it's about health and longevity. And actually going, these, these are not complicated things. And I don't think anybody not doesn't want to have a long life, a long, healthy life. I haven't met anyone, no one I've spoken to, to my, um, that I've, potential clients or clients I've spoken to, the reason they've come to me is because they want to be healthier and live longer. So again, it's it's a matter of going, do you know what? I believe I believe all the bump. I believe Tom and Michael and um, and kind of getting on with it. Yeah, yeah. And obviously, guys, so look, we've, we've gone through five things there and yeah. there's nothing groundbreaking and that there won't ever be unless it is someone that's in marketing or someone that's trying to sell you a program that they think is their solution. But at the end of the day, if you're looking for long term, this is what we're talking about, long term success, weight loss, health. These are five fundamentals that have to be put in place. Otherwise, it's always going to be a struggle. Would, would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, I think it always will be a struggle. And again, I'm going to say you don't have to do everything at once either. You don't have to. You, I don't know if, if you're if you're thinking some of these things I need to get in, into my life. Yeah. Choose one. Choose one and go. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna nail that. Yeah. And and it's going to make you healthier. And then I don't know. Even if you do, even if you chose just chose, just said I'm just going to nail one of those forever. That will chances are that will be the catalyst to do all the others. Yeah, because then you'll probably start having a bit more energy, a bit more headspace to maybe focusing on some some other things. And by the way, guys, there's there's obviously loads more that you can implement. But what we've shared today is what we think is like probably four, five of the most important things. And of course, there's other stuff that you can you can add on top. Of course, we, we're aware that there's more, and I'm sure you, you're aware there's more. And maybe there's other things that will work for people, but. You know, without these these five fundamentals, let's go through them again. Calorie deficit, some form of weight training, resistance training, getting daily movement, um, getting really good quality sleep and hydration. You know, they, those five are so important. Do them consistently over a period of time. And I would, I would put good money on you, you'd improve your health. Yeah, well, I think it would trans. I think more than that, I think it transform people's lives. Yeah, I'm low born there. <laughs> like, yeah. Come on, it, guys, that's, that's, we 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 know the truth because we see yeah. this, don't we? Like like week in week out, it's going like right. Let let's nail the basics. Or is that what what? There's no complicated, you know, diet plan and 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 exercise with giant sets and and machines and all this shit. No, we just we, you know we're just going to nail the basics and we're going to do it this week and next week and the week after the week after that and all the other stuff i guess is like just cherries on top of the the yeah. the, the main cake that is yeah like. yeah and then la last week says like you know this is about health as well this isn't about getting in the gym and being a bodybuilder or trying to perform on stage or anything like that. this is like the fundamentals of getting yourself in a much better place health wise mm -hmm. you know so those things that may be on the cherry on top are they even things that you actually want yeah. most people want to be healthier most people don't want to be on stage or like have a ripped six pack like they'd like it you know it wouldn't be a bad thing you know you woke up tomorrow like that you know you you, you might be something that you'd like have as a as a, a, an end goal but most people don't want that most people want to feel healthier don't they yeah yeah and just go about their lives and, and feel good and yeah feel good about themselves yeah. and and maybe not feel the way that they feel right now uh i certainly don't want to be on stage showing off my body and but i but i but i like really really like being feeling feeling healthy and being capable and and if if i know if i'd known how good it would feel now i probably would have put more effort into it all those years ago when i started yes interesting that um sometimes we don't sometimes like know how good it feels to be in that place until you actually get there and go oh god i'm supposed to, i'm supposed to feel like this Mm. Yeah. Um, all right. So look, I think we've given like huge value there. Um, as always, guys, we do appreciate any likes, any comments, any shares, any questions too. Like, you know, we, we like jumping on these. We do them weekly. And if you've got a topic or any questions, we'll, we'll happily answer it for, for you. Absolutely. We can we can talk as people know, we can talk about this stuff for, for hours. Yeah. 
We can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers, guys. Thanks, Michael. We'll see you next week. Cheers, Tom. Bye. Bye.